Minor league cricket has given great opportunities to American domestic cricketers over the past two years, but it's also been an avenue for cricketers from around the world to become American domestic players themselves. One such cricketer is joining me today, Justin Dill of St. Louis Americans. Justin, it's great to finally have you on the show. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me. Love the show. Love the work you're doing for, for the exposure of cricket in the U.S., so happy to be here. Oh, I appreciate that. So I tend to talk to a lot of the South African guys. And so you were, you were right there next on my list. And I'm, I'm pleased that you could, that you could be here right now. You're in, you're in Chicago, right? Yes. I've been here for almost a week. Uh, we, we took the trick, the five hour drive up here just to get some training in. We don't have it in Aussie yet in, in St. Louis. So, you know, took the opportunity to come and join Calvin and do some training before HBL and before the combine. So just getting him some work. Um, it's been a long winter so far. So, <laughs> you know, seeing some fellow South Africans and fellow MLTU guys and just getting some training in has been has been really nice. Yeah, so enjoying it. There you go. So St. Louis fans, any of you worrying right now when I say that Justin is in Chicago? It's just for training. You're rejoining the St. Louis team this year. Uh, do I yes. have that right? Yes, that's correct. We love it in St. Louis. Um, we've almost been there a year now and love all the people, love the energy, love the cricket community. And I'm definitely going to still be there uh, next season. So, uh, yeah. That's excellent. Yeah, it's nice that you guys get a chance to be somewhere where you're comfortable. You know, there's 26 teams in the league this past year. That's a lot of different places you can go and find your find your comfort zone. And, uh, you know, the, the St. Louis area always looks to me like it's an up-and-coming uh, cricket uh, area. Yeah, like you said, it's a big cricket loving community, and you know, uh, there's not as many kids uh, at the academy with where, uh, where we're coaching. So there's a lot of room for improvement in terms of quantity, but the quality of of what's happening there is great. Um, yes, there is still um, a few challenges. Like I said, the indoors. If we can get the indoors up and running as soon as possible, that's going to tremendously help. We got a lot of guys coming in even for the kids and for the minor league guys coming in from out of state. So to build a community in St. Louis where we've got more than 100, 200 kids would be the goal where everyone um, can train and develop as youngsters, even to, you know building towards the minor league team. But there's a lot of passion, people working just for the love of the game, which I haven't really seen otherwise, uh, anywhere else in the US. So that right. was refreshing to see people literally put in work for just the enjoyment of cricket. So, you know, we've got a lovely community and um, I'm very happy, you know, being in St. Louis. Yeah, St. Louis kind of strikes me as kind of like the next Morrisville type of place. Yeah. Like here in Morrisville, it's got a great reputation for people just kind of like going out of their way to make sure cricket is good, make sure, yes. you know, doing things because they love the love the game, you know, and, and that's, that's the reason why – that's what we want people to be doing. We want people to be trying to take care of the game and doing things to make everything – better and you know there's an old saying a rising tide floats all the boats so so you you definitely want you want that type of a community and and then th those people will come out and they'll watch the games the people who care yeah. about the cricket they're going to come out and watch the minor league games they're going to be invested in trying to see their own guys make it up to major league you know only 10 percent or so of the minor leaguers are going to make it to a major league team and that's about on par with Major League Baseball and Minor League Baseball. And we have the draft coming up right around the corner. And yeah. I know there's a big buzz about that. I'm sure, uh, you know, you know a bunch of guys who will go in that draft, yourself included. I mean, you've got to be one of the favorites to be picked. So what's the buzz right now in St. Louis about the Major League draft? I've not really spoken too much uh, to, you know, fellow players. And, and that it's been, like I said, there's not been much happening. We're not really training as a group, as a team. Um, so there's not been a lot of communication regarding the major league, but from outside of that, I think, you know, it's more just knowing what the structure and all those things are going to be. Um, we've got a sort of a clear idea now, which they, I don't think they've released it yet. Um, but I think it's just going to be interesting to see the, the ownership of the teams, the different owners, um, that's going to be involved in the team structures and how they're going to set up the teams and, and pick it. That's going to be fascinating to see sure. how they're going to, integrate all the players that's come over and the local players, the local talent this year, and integrate that with all the international players that they're going to bring in as well. So I'm just, for me, the most exciting thing is, you know, all the big names, who you're going to be partnered up with, who you can learn from as much as, you know, that you want to as, like, I think there's always room to learn and grow. Um, so 
you know, as youngsters, as us, everyone, I'm looking forward to, you know, being in the squad with, with all these big international players and learning from them and, and, you know, giving it your best. So that's for me, the most exciting thing. Um, looking forward to the draft definitely. Yeah. And I usually save this question for the end, but we're talking about it right now. Um, pick any player in the world that you would want to play with in major league cricket. We were talking about bringing in these great big name international players. There might be as many as seven on a team. If you could pick any international cricketer, who would you want? I think definitely a guy that makes me excited to watch cricket on TV. And I don't even want to imagine watching him or playing with him in person is, is Andre Nokia. Um, I think the way he's bowling at the moment and the pace at which he's bowling is, is frightening. So I think to be to be able to play with someone like that would be amazing to learn from him what goes through his mind. Um, people just I think a lot of people might, might just think he just runs up and bowls quick, but there's a lot going, uh, you know, the thought process going what to what he's doing and everything. So I would love to be playing with someone like that, learning from him, even just facing him. I don't think it would be <laughs> nice facing him, <laughs> in the net, but just to sort of have a feel of you know what that level is like. And what intensity that's like, that would be something that would be fascinating to um, to be a part of. Yeah, sure. And, and, and you know, that's one of the I, I really love the fast bowlers. I love the really fast bowlers. Mm. And that's something that we don't really have a lot of in the USA. We don't have a lot of yeah. guys who are bowling like lightning fast, 90, 93, 94 miles an hour. Yeah. And that that to do that to do about 93, 94 consistently, especially in a T20 game is some really something special. And and it brings a whole nother level of tactics into things too, because, you know, we're seeing a lot more bowlers bowl, you know, maybe back a length and then hit you with the, with the slower ball that looks like it's yeah. going to hit you in the chin and that sucker drops. And, and after yeah. you've seen a couple of really, really quick ones, and then you get that slower ball, if they have a really good slower ball, it's just devastating. Yeah. I think, like you said, it's, it's, it's exactly that the game. They say it's a batsman's game, a lot of the T20 cricket and T10 cricket. And you can say that, yes, but then you get guys like the mystery spinners and the unrex that bowl quick. And it brings the bowlers back into the game. You know, if someone's bowling 150 and the next ball's a change up at 125. Yeah. You know, your your hands can't set. You know, you have to set up for the quicker ball. So it brings the bowlers into play. It's fascinating to watch what happens when someone like that bowls and how the game then moves and, and the way batsmen approach it and, yeah, it's just, like I said, it would just be amazing to be a part of. And like you said, in, in America, you don't get that that often. Uh, it's the truth. And it's something we as players have to sort of, you know, we need to train, find a way to train for that. Uh, you know, to, I mean, US Open, I think I faced Shannon Gabriel for the first time. In, and that was, for me, the first time I faced, like, someone rolling really, really quick. Um, I think he's part of the test squad now. And it makes you just realize, like, the more exposure we get to this, the better we can become as players. and as groups in the US and, and, and get the cricket going better. Even for the youngsters, I see a lot of the youngsters playing and they're not as used to facing quick, but you know, quick paced bowling. So the more right. they can get exposed to it, playing minor league and, and playing, you know, you under 19, under 17 cricket, the better it is for the cricket in America in general. So yeah, that right. would be really exciting. Yeah. And we have had some pretty good quicks in minor league cricket uh, over the last couple of years. We have uh, Roshan Primus, who who was bowling for Silicon Valley Strikers uh, when they won the finals, and he actually bowled a really quick, board, uh, sorry, a really quick bouncer at, at Church Street Park that hit Robin Powell in the, in the helmet. And I was and, actually uh, I was on the non-strikers when that happened. I just came to the crease. Right um, now that you bring up the final that we lost, <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean it's it's. Uh, I really, you know, you enjoy those moments where it's, um, I mean, someone like Robin, after the minor league, what he achieved, and, and even in the minor league, it was to be a part of um, and learn from someone like that. And then they, face, like you said, facing someone like Rashawn Brahma's bowling quick, um, Ali Khan, there's a lot of quicks actually going around um, that came to the US and actually played here. Yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's good to be a part of something that, you know, there's a lot of people getting traction that want to come to the U S and come and play and be a part of what's happening. So that's the exciting part. Right. And, and with, in your time with New Jersey stallions, you got to come here uh, to Morrisville, North Carolina, a couple of times uh, with, with the stallions. There were two week two different weekends. You were here where you got to see where you got to play with Robin Powell at church street park. And yeah. some of the shots that Robin played 
in those games were just absolutely stunning. Like some yeah. of the best, uh, probably he's probably responsible for the best cricket shots I've seen in person uh, yes. here here in North Carolina. He was absolutely I second that. Yeah, yeah, I second that. I, I remember he came from the first training, and we were training in in New Jersey, and we've got the one place we used to train at was um, a matting wicket, which is not the easiest to get in on head on. Um, and he came in for, we had a live game uh, scenario and he was hitting a few, mistiming a few. And then when he got used to the pace of the wicket, I don't think he mistimed one ball. In, everything was going at least 10 meters over the boundary. So um, incredible. I remember, like you said, just uh, Judge Street Park, he hit a six over cover to Adi Gupta that went into the road, which, which was probably one of the biggest six, uh, sixes I've seen. So just and it's not with Rovman. What what I really love to and what I learned from him is the way he thinks about the game. You think it's just brute power, of course, um, which that element's there. But the way he actually approaches the game and and thinks about it is, um, you know, that's helped my game a lot. He doesn't just go in there and tries to hit it as far as he can. There's there's an element of of a structure towards it and and planning. He's played with some incredible cricketers. He spoke about when he played. Um, with Kumar Sangakara, Dale Stein, all these legends of the game. So he's also, you know, learned so much from them and then passing that knowledge on to our youngsters and, and to myself. It's, like you said, he did some freaky stuff on the field. So, yeah, it was uh, you know, incredible to be a part of that final. Unfortunately, we did lose. Um, I don't think a lot of teams or a lot of people backed us to get that far. So I think it was uh, no regret from us as a team and and, and we went to the finals, Eton Conference champs. Um, and we were just, I think our success was we were a really good team with no real superstars and everyone just putting up their hand when needed to be. Right. And then, then of course, this last year you played with St. Louis and you got to experience the St. Louis summer. And now you're experiencing the St. Louis winter. And it's <laughs> it's pretty brutal. Like uh, I've heard a lot about St. Louis, how it has such extremes. Yeah, I mean... We got a, a bit of taste of winter in New Jersey when we came back from South Africa. There was we literally our flight was delayed from South Africa coming back because of a snowstorm in J in New York. So the JFK airport was closed for for a day or two. So we when we came back uh, end of last year um, or end of the year before beginning of last year, um, we got a, a, a first experience of snow, which was incredible. We literally had to shovel the car. It took us an hour to shovel the snow away from the car to get the U-Haul to get our stuff back into the apartment. So that, that was an experience in itself. And then, so that set us up a bit for experiencing winter. So the winter is extremely cold. I think about a week or two ago, it was, I think, minus 20 Celsius, which is extremely cold. Ooh. But we actually, we've come to enjoy it. Like, um, we really don't mind the cold. The, the summer in St. Louis, I must say, I've... I don't want to say I've never experienced something like that, like that, but it was incredibly warm. And it's not just being warm, it's the humidity. My first training session I went to, um, my clothes were sticking onto my, onto my uh, body. And I remember someone telling me, that, uh, like, I have to bring a backup shirt, like extra socks and stuff, because it's so humid. Um, so that was, that was, for me, the getting used to the summer was more uh, adjustment than getting used to the winters. Oh uh, yeah, well you're not trying to play cricket in the middle of the winter though. So there yeah. you go. And then you got the novelty of it being of having snow on the ground. You know, that's still still fairly new for you. Some of the youngsters there are pretty good. I was watching the national championships for the for the youth and there were a couple performers from from uh the St. Louis area. I said it in season when we um off the game to Peter Dry the the amount of work the youngsters put in is incredible and because we don't have the facilities for the winters in summers, when the when the youngsters come and they, they train, they really do put in the work. Our sessions ran from half past seven to half past eleven. That's four hour shifts in the morning in the heat, and then they take a lunch break, and then they will help us with my, uh, minor league training. They will come bowl to us, field for us. So they really do put put in the work, and there is some really talented young players. Um, Bavia Meta came last game, scored a sixty. Uh, Sid Shaw played, Pat Patel, uh, Arnav Jam. There's so much talent. Um, other youngsters in the academy as well. Arnav's brother is, I think he's U13 at the moment. Um, but he's already scored double hundreds. Um, yeah, I've heard about him. Group. Yeah, <laughs> so there's some, there's some really, like I said, the quality is there. The quantity is not yet there, but that will come with time. 
uh, and and the you know people are invested and they're invested in developing the youngsters. We the the nice thing about the grounds is it's owned by us. It's owned by well ACAC is the academy and and St Louis is the team, but it's owned by by us. It's not owned by the council or anything. So the sky's the limit for what we can do on the fields and right. the developments that can take place there. Two fields next to each other. So there's a lot of plans for for what can happen or what will happen, and uh, it's exciting to be a part of it. Um, yeah, like I said, when I arrived in St. Louis, I told the guys our our biggest you know objective is to develop because we've got the youngsters there. I think if I can remember correctly, last year it was I think three of the four kids were 17 years old, maybe right. even I think it was off if I can remember correctly. So there's so much more if you look at it and they're given two more years and they still you uh, 19 as like all this experience, you know that it's going to be a, a different ball game. So. I'm super excited for for the future for them. Uh, they're hardworking young kids. They got their um, head screwed on right. Um, they focused. They dedicated. They want to do well. So yeah, it's super exciting. One of your co-stars <clears throat> from from the team. I've made a lot of jokes about him uh, in the show last year. Uh, Luke Schofield uh, in, his, yes. in his magic mustache, powering his superhuman big play abilities. He made some really good big plays for the team. He made a great catch. So um, that's that's been fun. I've gotten some mileage out of that. I'm getting some mileage about it right this minute. Yeah. Uh, do you think there's any truth about that? Do you think that uh, that helps him, uh, you know, man up a little bit? I call him Peter Schofield. I don't know if you remember the series Prison Break. Uh, uh, yeah. But there was a, yeah, there was a character. So, you know, that's my nickname for him. But I think definitely that adds maybe 1% to 5% extra ability. And, <laughs> and we, we, we spoke just about Andy Schmokia and he rocks a mustache and I mean, he bowls 150 K. So, right, I mean, right. maybe there's some truth. I, you know, when I saw his mustache, I said, guys, we need, everyone needs to do the mustache. And then <laughs> I think about half of the guys jumped on the boat. So it wasn't as successful in terms of getting everyone involved in it. But I mean, having that, um, you know, sort of culture where guys can express themselves in whatever way and, and you have things like that, I think really adds to, guys jelling together and, and just enjoying the cricket because you know at the end of the day it sounds so cliche but the more you can enjoy it the, the better you'll do and it goes the other way around as well the better you do the more it will the enjoy enjoyment will come as well so things like that just it makes it you know fun to be a part of a group like that that at times you know don't take themselves right. as seriously yeah yeah well i think this year if you go with if you if you can get even more guys to jump on the mustache wagon I yes, think, I think you guys are going to make the playoffs this year. You almost made wish the playoffs. Players, yes, yes, hundred percent. We can maybe wish. Maybe if we get all eleven, right. I think the youngsters, the youngsters are going to struggle. Maybe, but we can, <laughs> we can get them, you know, get them sorted. Maybe make a, a plan or something. But um, yeah, that will. If, if Luke can shave his head as well, then it gets closer to the Peter Schofield. Then we can maybe get that set up. Yeah, right, right. There you go. Maybe get some tattoos or something. Yeah. Yeah. So the, um the St. Louis blueprint of, of our team tactics on his back, maybe. Right. Yeah, there you go. I like that. <laughs> so or or just you know a big arches or something, you know. The, yeah. Yeah, there you there go. You so um your wife Jessica, uh, I follow both of you guys on Instagram, and she is a documenter of Justin Dill sleeping in weird places. And uh yes. Some of some of the, you know, some really good content there. So if anybody wants to uh, wants to check that out, give her a follow. <laughs> you guys got, you guys have only been married now for what about a year and a half or so. Yeah, if I get this wrong, I won't be in trouble. But it's been, yeah, it's been just over a year. Uh, last year, January. So yeah, still still fresh. Um, you know, we've it's been. I think it the hardest was for her moving because obviously. Uh, she wasn't allowed to work and we leave her friends and family behind. But I think we've adjusted nicely, especially in St. Louis. Um, she's loving it at the moment. So we find community, just not in cricket, but also outside of cricket. So, you know, we've thoroughly enjoyed the, our time in St. Louis and, and that's filtered down to her as well. Um, and she's loved being also sort of not involved. I don't want to say involved in the minor league, but just being around, you know, getting people to come watch. Uh, right. We've had some local American people come and actually watch and, and, and be a part of um, sort of just the St. Louis sort of getting traction from from American people coming to watch. So 
um yeah it's been it's been great it's been a absolute journey getting you know coming from south africa coming here um but you know it's definitely been worth it so far yeah that's great yeah uh, you know she is she the team photographer down there as well i think that, yeah the photography is more of a, just a hobby on the side she loves just to take the camera it started off just basically just i'll take my camera with and just take some uh, photos and now she, she loves to do it um it started off just you know taking pictures of me and now she takes pictures of everyone i think most of the team also afterwards you get some <laughs> pics of me as well so um uh, she's really enjoyed that side of it as well and, and that's also just you know staying busy while being yeah um right she can't like i said she can't work at the moment till till we get our green card so um that's one way of her staying busy and she's she absolutely loves doing that and being involved in, in that capacity yeah in terms of the nav diaries i actually didn't I wasn't aware that she was doing it at the start because I, I don't really, I'm not a big fan of Instagram and being on it really. Uh, <laughs> so I actually wasn't aware that she was filming me while sleeping. And then when I, when I realized, you know, I still was trying to hide it, hide my naps away from her, but she, she always seems to catch me when, <laughs> I'm, when I least expect it. <laughs> there, there you go. So do you have an, a favorite American sport and a favorite American sports team? Ooh, favorite American sports, I must say, um, I followed quite a bit of basketball before coming over. Uh, so that's definitely if I have to pick a sport, I'll say basketball. Um, I've I've gotten more into baseball and NFL. I did follow football quite, uh, not as much as baseball, uh, basketball, but I did follow it before I came over. Um, so definitely basketball is the one sport. And then a sports team, I would say... Um, I love LeBron James. I started watching basketball, I think, 2010, 11, and followed it sort of just before that when he moved to the Miami Heat. So when he moved there and he got those championships, I actually watched basketball. I, at times, I would record it and then wake up because it was different times to us. It was like 2, 3 in the morning, which right. the games will air. So I would record it, wake up and watch it. I remember watching the final. I think it was either 11 or 12, 2011 or 12, when they beat, if I'm correct when Ray Allen hit the corner jump I think it was against the Spurs I remember what uh, waking up watching the recording not checking my phone to see what happened and actually watching that so like I would definitely say whatever team LeBron plays on so at the moment it's the Lakers they haven't right. they have been up and down this season but I, I'll support them and hopefully they can do well and, and make it into playoffs um yeah so I'd say Lakers and wherever LeBron goes and I mean he passed Kareem the other night for the scoring record was which was incredible. So to witness that in our time. Um, yeah. So the Lakers, I'll say the Lakers at the moment, I, I supported Indianapolis Colts because Manning was there. It's been difficult to sort of find a team because you want to support someone close to where you live. Sure. Um, but St. Louis doesn't, they used to have the uh, St. Louis Rams, but Rams. that obviously, um, yeah, that is not anymore. So the C Kansas City Chiefs is close by sort of, I think most people adopted that. All right. So I asked you if, if you could pick any player in the world, to play with you in Major League Cricket. How about any player in the USA? Oh, that's a good question. Um, oh, there's so many that I would like to play with. Um, I'm, I'll probably maybe name a few. I think one guy I really like to play with was Saiteja Mukamala from Stallions. Such a young guy, but with such a calm head on his shoulders. Um, I would love to see him being involved in the Major League and, and maybe playing with him again. Um, such a talented guy. Even Robin was, was talking about how talented uh star was so that would be great to be reunited with him i mean there's so many talent talented players in the u.s obviously if you if you look at mlc um you know Josie is one that comes up immediately um yeah i mean for me it's th there's so much cricket happening in the u.s um and you play with so many people so it's so nice to just experience different guys and, and, and how they go about their business. And so for me, it's almost like if I can play with someone new, that's, that's great because then I can experience how they go about their things and maybe learn something that, that I can help in my game. Um, I think I've, I recently played with Nauman Anwar, exceptional player, um, you know, from Pakistan. I played with him in the US Open. Uh, so, you know, there's so many talented players. Hosi, I'm the year with Calvin this week. Um seeing how he trains and, and working with him. Um, so, yeah, Courtney as well. So there's so many guys. Um, but, yeah, I, I'd like to say I'll, I'll keep it biased and just say um, that I would love to play with, uh, with there's, there's so many guys that I would love to play with. Yeah, yeah I, I understand that. 
And, and, you know, St. Louis in St. Louis there, if you add a couple of guys, you guys can, can go a long way in, uh, in the minor league. You just missed the playoffs last year. You know, you mentioned Sai Mukamala. Wouldn't he be a great addition to, to that team in St. Louis? It, uh, Ray, Ray Ramratton as well. Yes. You that's know? another name that, you know, came to my mind. Yeah. Ray. Yeah. Um, we were blessed that Stallions was very good youngsters. Sure. Um, and uh, the guys that was basically game winners while being on a 19, on a 21. So that made right. a massive difference for us. I think that's why teams might have underestimated us. And that's why, we, you know, I think we went that far. So many talent players, uh, Sasha, I'm trying to, Milo oh. Varapu. Milo Varapu, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he was incredible for us. Jesse Singh is a ultimate competitor in a, in a gun cricket. I would love to play with him again. Um, so, you know, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's like you said, we can definitely make a, a push for playoffs. Um, you know, the structure of the minor leagues changing. So that's going to be sort of a challenge and something to take on board to get the right team dynamics going. I think um, a lot of teams are, have had two, three seasons to plan and structure and get guys uh, involved. So everyone's going to be ready to fire and, and ready to go. So. We can't take it lightly, but I think if we do add the right pieces in terms of the wild cards and those things, we can definitely uh, make a push for the playoffs. Yeah, I don't see how I don't I don't think that that's a stretch at all. I think you guys have a very good team. That division is also very. There's so many things that happen in that division. It seems like yeah. it's open. It's wide open until the end. You know, uh, last the players who were great in first season, or the sorry, the teams who were great in the first season weren't necessarily great in the second season. You saw a lot of the Texas teams take a step back last year, and yeah. uh, your your team, just the Chicago Tigers, and of course the Stars were right in the mix too. So yeah. uh, it's it's nice to have. I think that Tigers team added a whole lot to that division. Uh, you know, you know Calvin. Yeah, team. yeah, exactly, because they. You can't take it lightly. You can't. You can't think. You know, one team's going to not be on their game. I mean, Lone Star, like you said, Lone Star was was a very good team the uh, the, um, the season before last, and they struggled last season. But that means they're going to come back stronger next season. So, right. there's not going to be an easy game. You know, a lot of the cricket was half of the cricket was played on Astro last season. Now it's going to change to hybrid. So again, you've got a, a different dynamic. It's different wickets, different surfaces. Yeah. Um, you know, teams will be ready again. Chicago was strong. You know, all the Texas teams, a lot of guys have moved to Texas. So the Texas teams are going to be strong again. Um, Dallas is going to be strong. Houston is going to be strong. Lone Star. So, I mean, there's not going to be an easy game. And that's a challenge for us as well. We've we've made steps almost every season. The first season I wasn't here, they did well. And now we've gone a small step up. And so the challenge for us is to stay consistent and keep moving forward. It's nice in this in minor league cricket to be able to build a team to kind of yeah, everybody's kind of local to each other. There's 26 teams right now across the whole USA. There's probably going to be more this year. So that means that these these communities cuz USA is very is a very large country. Yeah, uh, that's good. I don't know if every cricket fan appreciates that around around the world, but it's a massive yeah. country. You know, because because it's so big and so spaced out, these communities actually matter. You know, you, you, you train with your team in the off season, you train with your yeah. team during the week, you have the same guys on your team from year to year, especially when you're not in a draft zone, like you guys are where, yeah. you, where you're, you haven't been in a draft zone. So you get your pick of, of, of your, of your teammates from the local area. So that's one of my favorite things about, about minor league cricket. Yeah, I definitely, I think, I mean, our first domestic flight was from JFK to LA and it was six hours and it, and it, I couldn't, it almost didn't make sense. The fact that a flight from South Africa to Dubai is eight hours is almost a similar time. You know, like you said, America's massive. There's, there's so much um, space and, and so much room for opportunity and development within these communities. And it's crazy to see how, how much love and passion there is for cricket in the US. And even with speaking to Americans, a lot of times, I've actually not come across a lot of Americans that's not even aware that what cricket is. Every time I say, you know, I play cricket, they're like, oh, they've heard of it. At least they've heard of it, which is great. So um, the exposure is getting in the communities and, and, and people wanting to know, oh, what is this? What's the sport they play? And they've seen it. They've driven past the field um, is is immense. And, and, and it will just keep on growing. I think if you have to put all the cricketing communities together, you'll be, 
astounded how many people are involved and and invested in cricket in the US. When we played that final weekend in Morrisville, there was, I mean, so many local fans that came to watch. Um, it's not a big stadium yet. There's obviously plans for for improving the uh, uh, capacity of the of Morrisville, of Church Street Park. But like, there were so many people from the local community coming to watch, which, which was, I'm, I always say, inspiring to see because it means that there's you know love for cricket in the US. So that's brilliant. Yeah, grounds in the middle of a community. It's a perfect situation. But yeah. I always, I I can go on about, I always go on about Church Street Park. I can talk yeah, about it. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, a lot of advice. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Well, I'm hoping the final will be here again this year. And I'm hoping we'll see you guys here. But thank you very much for joining me, Justin. It's it's really great talking to you, catching up with you. And I can't wait to watch the draft and see where you go in the draft. Yeah, appreciate it. Thanks, Nate. Thanks for having me exciting times and, and like i said before thanks for what you do for cricket in the u.s and the exposure i think it's brilliant um yeah so exciting times ahead for for cricket in the u.s well it's my pleasure you know i do it because it's a lot of fun <laughs> yes yeah obviously love it <laughs> all right thanks justin cheers thanks <laughs>